In this video, I will focus on rice, beans, pasta, and flour. Like any other food product you buy, these dried food products will have their respective use by or best before dates on their packaging. In most cases these dates will probably be up to a year or more. There. 6-month food stockpile problem solved. Now you can buy as much as you can afford and keep it in your food stockpile. But wait, it is not as easy as it sounds. Remember, storage or stockpiling of food requires a little bit of science, and also requires recognition that threats to your food stockpile also come from within. When you buy rice, beans, pasta, and flour, you are also, unknowingly, getting something free with it. This free item is the threat that could ruin your entire food stockpile, and even your normal grocery cupboard, if it is not addressed properly. This common threat may come in different forms and may be known by different scientific names depending on where it vacations, but we know it as, the dreaded weevil. It is therefore worth repeating, that your food stockpile location is absolutely important, and, how you store your food is equally, if not, more important. So, before I get into the maths of storing your rice, beans, pasta, and flour, let's look at a bit of food storage science. The dreaded rice and granary weevils, as the name suggests, are found in rice and other grains we buy and consume. They are free riders, that is, they enjoy a free ride from the factory where they are produced to your local supermarket, and from there, another free ride on your shopping trolley to your car, and then another free ride to their new vacation paradise, your home. If left unchecked, they could be more deadly than the worst zombie you have ever imagined. To ensure that only you and your family get the most out of your purchase of rice, beans, pasta, and flour, and not those creepy weevils or other invaders, there are a few methods for enhancing the stockpile longevity of these food products, whilst at the same time, reducing the risk of infestation. The first easy method is to simply freeze these products immediately after you have purchased them. Studies have shown that by keeping them in your freezer for at least a week, or even for up to three weeks for good measure, that this would be enough to kill any weevils that were honeymooning inside, as well as any legacies of that honeymoon. However, be careful. It is said that the eggs of the rice weevil, which is the most dreaded of them all, can lay dormant even if frozen, and then, like in an alien sci-fi movie, hatch when it finds itself in warmer temperatures, and thereafter wreak havoc in its short three to six month life cycle. Depending on the packaging and size in which these products came in, and unless in sealed plastic packaging that can fit into your freezer and subsequently withstand the conditions of the freezer, you may have to transfer the products into airtight containers or vacuum seal the contents before subjecting them to the freezer. You may even consider putting a freezer bag over the original packaging, or to put the products into a freezer bag first, and then put them into a container, as this will provide an extra layer of protection against moisture seepage into the original bag or container, and protect against freezer burn. So, after you have subjected your rice and grain occupants to the frozen hell on earth treatment, the storage of these products then become the key critical success factor to their actual reason for your food stockpile. After the one or three week freeze, should you have the option of a working spare fridge, you can then simply store your rice and grains in there, as rice and most grains are best stored in temperatures of 4 degrees Celsius or lower. If instead you do not have that spare fridge, and you intend to store it directly in your stockpile location, then you must ensure that you first thaw out the bags or container, and then once they are completely dry, that is, now back at room temperature, then you could either transfer and seal the contents into mylar bags, or you could transfer the contents directly into approved food-grade storage buckets with sealable lids either by themselves or inside the mylar bag. While the products which you have purchased will have their best before or use by dates which will fit in with your six-month stockpile target, and even though I did say start small, you may want to consider prolonging the shelf life from the get-go. For instance, research from the University of Utah has indicated that storing rice at a constant temperature of 21 degrees Celsius, or 70 degrees Fahrenheit, with oxygen absorbers will store well for up to 10 years, and in cooler storage areas rice sealed in oxygen-free containers can be stored for up to 30 years. Since I have already mentioned mylar bags, food-grade storage buckets, and oxygen absorbers, let me pause for a minute and go through the basic science of these and why they will be a good investment from the start, should you be able to afford them. A mylar bag is essentially a polyethylene film that is made from stretched polyethylene terephthalate otherwise known as biaxially oriented polyethylene terephthalate. First made in the 1950s, mylar is used for its high tensile strength, chemical and dimensional stability, transparency, reflectivity, gas and aroma barrier properties, and electrical insulation. Mylar is the preferred storage option for prepping food storage because it's food-grade safe, 
However, like any bag, the disadvantage is that it is not rodent-proof. Another vital aspect you must consider is the quality of the Mylar bag. Especially if you want to package heavy-duty dry goods in smell-proof bags for an extended period. Oxygen absorbers essentially reduce the presence of oxygen in a food container by creating a higher concentration of nitrogen. This then extends the shelf life of dry food storage. Oxygen absorbers come in various sizes, usually ranging from 50 cubic centimeters to 3000 cubic centimeters cc refers to cubic centimeters and indicates the amount of oxygen absorbing capacity of each individual packet. Oxygen absorbers are very easy to use and essentially prevents food damage through oxidation of certain key vitamins, and inhibit the growth of food mold, mildew, and bacteria, as well as prevents food damage from an infestation of insects that may view your food stockpile as an attractive holiday destination. A food-grade bucket or storage container is made with materials that do not have harmful contaminants that can affect food or any organic material. Literally, a food-grade bucket is much more than just a bucket. A food-grade bucket will be labeled as food safe and will have either a 1, 2, 4, or 5 on it. These numbers refer to polyethylene terephthalate, PET or PEET, high-density polyethylene, HDPE, low-density polyethylene, LDPE, and polypropylene, PP, respectively. Buckets made of HDPE, number 2, are generally considered the best material for food storage, especially over the long term. It's important to note that not all HDPE buckets are food grade, to be sure, you'll want to look for a food grade logo or other indication of food safe or food grade materials. Now, let's do some maths, or bean counting if you prefer. Let's start with rice. People have grown rice for thousands of years, and, it is probably one of the oldest cereal type grains in the world. Even in the modern world, it is still a staple food for more than half of the world's population. Rice comes in many varieties and choices, but, essentially fall into the categories of either white rice or brown rice. Both white and brown rice contain mainly carbohydrate and some protein, with virtually no fat or sugar. In terms of world rice consumption, white rice is by far the most common choice, even though brown rice is said to have more nutritive benefits. Whilst you may have your own preference for what type of rice you eat on a normal day, for purposes of food stockpiling, white rice is considered the better and more safer option than brown rice. This is mainly related to the fact that brown rice still has both its bran or seed coat, and the germ intact, and, since it still has oil content, this impacts its shelf life. Going back to the assumption of a family of four, where usually, two cups of rice will be sufficient for a meal, that is, half a cup of unboiled rice per person, it is then deduced that if a standard 200 gram coffee cup was used, that every kilogram of rice will then provide you with five cups of rice. This means that one kilogram of rice will provide two and a half rice meals, and two kilograms will provide five rice meals, or, five days worth of rice servings for a family of four. If you then extrapolate this over a six-month period, where a 2 kilograms bag of rice will cover five days of sustenance, and discounting the remaining two days for a non-rice-based meal, then you need to stockpile at least 72 kilograms of rice in order to provide a rice stockpile for at least six months. Storing dried beans is essential. Not only are beans real, cowboy food that suits any crisis, but it is also loaded with nutritional value and health benefits that are equally valuable in both normal and abnormal times. Beans are from the legume family of plants, like split peas and lentils. For purposes of your six-month stockpile window, the types of dried beans that you stockpile is up to you. On average, beans triple in volume when soaked and cooked, meaning that a cup of dried beans will give you three cups of volume when cooked. Using the U.S. Dry Beans Council estimate of serving a quarter cup of uncooked beans per person, for the typical family of four, one cup of dried beans, when cooked, will be considered an ample serving to feed them in one meal. One cup of dried beans is usually in the range of 250 grams. Therefore a 500 gram packet of dried beans will give you two cups of uncooked beans, which then would be sufficient to provide two separate meals for a family of four when boiled and cooked. Assuming that at the time you are drawing from your food stockpile, and you plan to have a meal with beans twice every week, then one 500 gram bag will have to be stockpiled for every week. For a six month window, you will have to store 26 bags of 500 gram dried beans, or a total of 13 kilograms of dried beans. Obviously, you could store different varieties of dried beans to break the monotony. Pasta is another good item for your food stockpile. Not only does it break the cycle of beans and rice, but also most other regular foods can find a home in a bed of pasta. 
It can even be seen as a comfort food in a time of stress. Pasta is one of those foods that has a multitude of types, shapes, and sizes, some even elitist sounding. The principles for medium to long term storage will, however, apply to all types of dried pasta. Disregarding the hype of gluten this end, gluten free that, and notwithstanding the fact that in a survival situation the last thing on your mind should be a weight loss diet, pasta is rich in carbohydrates. Together with the benefit of the protein it offers, it digests slowly, and because of this low GI, it makes you feel fuller for a longer period. You are then able to benefit from the slow burn to provide for your energy requirements. Pasta is a relatively inexpensive food product. More so, one 500 gram pack is more than enough to feed an entire family of four and still deliver a load of carbohydrates. If a family of four decides to stockpile pasta for the two day break from rice for a six month window, whether to eat by itself or as a bed for another food product, then this would require a pasta stockpile of at least 26 kilograms of pasta, that is, 500 grams per day or one kilogram of pasta for each week over the 26 weeks that make up the six months. So, as you plan and prepare to stockpile your rice, beans, pasta, or any other dried grain product, remember that these would require the use of your stored water in a worst-case scenario. According to the pasta experts, cooking 500 grams of pasta requires around 4 liters of water. Cooking rice and beans also requires a few liters of water. One way to save your precious water when cooking rice and beans is soak them long before you actually need to boil them, or you could do a quick boil and then soak for an hour before you actually do a real boil. This will not only shorten boiling time and reduce the water needed, but will also reduce the amount of heat energy required. And lastly, do not forget. This guy could be your greatest threat. Subscribe to the South African Prepper. Like and share my videos with your family, friends, and colleagues since we are all in this together. Here you get real information, and fact-based insights and guidance. I don't do opinion or BS. Preparedness is not a hobby. It is a way of life that could save your life.